Hey guys, welcome to the channel, Gen Dick Commando. Please like, share and subscribe before we go any further. Today we're going to be reacting to the Kepler Telescope found new planets better than Earth. I love space stuff, anything like this. It's uh, from the channel Destiny, I believe it's called. So please go and give them some love, troops. And let's just get straight into this one, guys. Hope you enjoy this video today. Boom, boom. The Kepler Telescope was built for one purpose, to look at a certain patch in the Milky Way in search of exoplanets. The exoplanet hunter observed over hundreds of thousands of stars and discovered thousands of exoplanets during its lifetime. That is cool. Launched in 2009, as part of NASA's discovery program, Kepler's job was to constantly scan a fixed patch of sky within our Milky Way galaxy to find planetary systems. At the time of the launch, it had the largest primary mirror ever sent into space, and it also had a 96 megapixel camera to process the light. Astronomers were pretty damn big. If you know anything about cameras and stuff, that's uh, that's impressive interested in finding out just how many stars have planets orbiting around them and how many of these extrasolar planets or exoplanets have conditions that are suitable for life to develop. In its nine years in space, Kepler observed 530,536 stars and confirmed the existence of 2,662 new exoplanets. These exoplanets are unlike anything we've ever seen in our solar system before. Most of them are significantly bigger than Earth and orbiting so close to their stars that they complete one revolution every several days. And Do you think we'll get to the point where we can actually, you know, visit different planets and stuff at the drop of a hat instantaneously? I think it's, ob it's obvious that we're going to get to a point within our, li not within our lifespan, but within within the, the existence of humans, um, I think we're going to be hopping around the planets with, with quite with ease, to be honest with you. I think that's well within our, um, with our potential. If you think about how far we've came on in the past 100, 150 years, we've, we've came on leaps and bounds technologically. So in the next couple of thousand years, if we keep on making strides like that, especially with the artificial intelligence and all of that integrating um, and developing our technology, then I think we can definitely travel, guys. And there are some very strange worlds. Some have star-facing sides with temperatures that can melt iron, and have entire hemispheres covered with oceans of liquid molten rock. Other cool. exoplanets the size of Jupiter orbit not one but two stars. If you're standing on the surface of one of these planets, you'd be able to see a binary sunset. Whoa. But Kepler's legacy is that it successfully found Earth-sized worlds orbiting at a safe distance from their host stars inside what's known as a habitable zone or Goldilocks zone. This is where the temperatures are warm enough for water to condense on their surfaces, but not so cold that it will just freeze up entirely. Mm. Although being in this zone doesn't guarantee the existence of life, the presence of water is significant and the foundation of life as we know it. Mm -hmm. One such exoplanet discovered by Kepler that has recently generated excitement among researchers is called K218b. In September 2019, two scientific teams independently announced that they found signs of liquid water in the planet's atmosphere. Situated 124 light years away from Earth, k 2 How on Earth do they... <laughs> How do they measure that? How do the instruments they've got actually measure that there might be water there? 124 light years away. <laughs> it just beggars belief, doesn't it, really? 18B is about eight times the mass of Earth and three times as big. It orbits a main sequence red dwarf star called K218. A red dwarf star is the smallest, coolest star and by far the most common type of star in the Milky Way. According to Kepler's data, astronomers estimate that 6% of red dwarf stars have an Earth-sized planet in the Goldilocks zone, uh. at least in our neighborhood. To find water on the surface of one such planet is a landmark discovery in the search for potentially habitable alien worlds. Yeah. K218b is also the first planet with water out of all of the exoplanets discovered by Kepler in the habitable zone of stars. Kepler first discovered the planet in 2015, and since then its composition has been studied using other telescopes, like the Spitzer and Hubble Space Telescope. K218 
Kepler mainly used what's known as the transit method for exoplanet hunting. It essentially means that if a planet passes in front of a star, the light from the star dims slightly, and that's how we can tell that there's a planet there. The level of dimming and how long it lasts gives us important information about the size and orbit of the planet. However, detecting the transit of an extrasolar planet is very challenging. Mm. For example, the diameter of Earth is only 1 109th of that of the Sun. So, for an outside observer of the solar system, the passage of Earth would dim the output of the Sun by only 0.008%. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be that's going to be pretty tough to measure. Again, like I was saying before, how on Earth did they measure that? But it's with, with extreme minute detail, really. Cameras had to be sensitive enough to detect this minute change in the luminosity. Mm -hmm. Using the same method way back in 2014, Kepler first found a potentially habitable exoplanet. Kepler 186f ignited the imaginations of space nerds everywhere when NASA announced its discovery. Now a new study indicates the exoplanet 500 light years away may also have seasons and a climate similar oh. to our own. New research out of Georgia Tech University has analyzed the planet's spin and axial tilt and found that its tilt is stable like Earth's, which makes it likely that Kepler 186f also has regular seasons and a stable climate. So if it's got that and it's developed enough in terms of how long it's existed for, there could be a possibility that life exists. But what do you think, guys? Do you, do you reckon that there is life on other planets other than ours? I mean, bearing in mind the sheer great monstrosity in terms of size of our universe, it just, I can't, I, you can't even get your head around it. It's so huge. There has to be, you know, there has to be a chance, doesn't there? You can't say that there's no way. I don't think you can anyway. There's no way you can go, nah, it doesn't exist. Life can't exist anywhere. It's that big. Surely, surely there has to be life on other planets. I think the problem people um, tend uh, to, to imagine is life like ours. Now, that would be really, really, really unique if it was, but I'm not thinking about life like ours. We're just looking at, you know, we're looking at microorganisms and stuff like that. Does, do, do, do those exist, you know, on, the, on a microscopic scale? Is there life, um, you know, because then other forms of life can sprout from that. So I think the problem people think is, does life exist on other planets that exists in the same capacity as our planets, like human beings and animals and stuff running around? You've got to, you haven't necessarily got to think like that. You've got to, got to kind of change your thought pattern slightly. Similar research on the massive Kepler database is going on in research universities all across the world. In fact, in recent years, previous Kepler findings that were rejected as potential Earth-sized exoplanets due to algorithmic error are getting rediscovered. These false positives are now slowly being reanalyzed in conjunction with data from other telescopes. One such planet is Kepler 1649c. In mid-2020, while combing through old Kepler data and matching it against new data from the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, astronomers confirmed the existence of another exoplanet with very favorable conditions for life. Kepler 1649c, located 300 light years from Earth, is very similar to Earth in size and estimated temperature. This newly revealed world is only 1.06 times larger than our own planet. Also, the amount of starlight it receives from its host star, which is also a red dwarf, is 75% of the amount of light Earth receives from our Sun, meaning mm. the exoplanet's temperature may be similar to our planet's as well. Kepler 1649c provides yet another example of an Earth-sized planet in the habitable zone of a red dwarf star. Wow. But before we get ahead of ourselves, it's important to note that out of the 2,662 exoplanets identified by Kepler, only 16 of them lie inside the Goldilocks zone. Mm. And out of these 16, some of these planets are tidally locked with their parent stars, meaning that only one hemisphere of the planet faces the star, and this is not ideal for life. Others why? are more like a smaller version of Neptune than a large... If anyone knows why that makes a difference, again, I'm not really a space nerd, I don't know too much about it, why would that prohibit life on Earth? ...larger version of Earth, and planets similar to Neptune are expected to have a significant envelope of hydrogen surrounding any layer of water on the surface, with a planetary core of rock and iron. If the hydrogen envelope is too thick, the temperature and pressure of the water layer beneath would be far too great to support life. On top of all of this, despite being cooler, red dwarf stars tend to be more active than sun-like stars. 
Thus, the planets may be exposed to higher quantities of damaging ultraviolet radiation than what we're used to here on Earth. Because of this, surface temperatures can range between minus 100 and 116 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 73 to 47 degrees Celsius. That means the surface could, on average, be colder than Antarctica, or hotter than Earth's most blistering deserts. Unfortunately, we just don't have the technological know-how to study the composition and atmospheres of these alien worlds and comprehensively answer all these questions, yet. But don't despair. Based on the statistical analysis of all the Kepler observations, astronomers now estimate that one in five stars like the Sun have planets about the size of Earth, and a surface temperature conducive to life. Given that about 20% of stars are sun-like in our galaxy, that amounts to several billions of potential habitable Earth-like planets just in our Milky Way alone. Kepler Here's a thought, it just came into my brain there. I wonder if we it's it's not a matter of if it's when we have it another planet i know um elon musk wants to you know be the first person i think to to die on on mars all right he doesn't doesn't want to die on on this on this planet um i wonder if he's thought about this we as a human species tend to like to do things similar to what we've always done and we live our life based on a currency system really all right um the currency system to survive all right you need things you purchase it you survive and it's just a never-ending cycle of you need things you purchase them you survive and you do certain things in life to be able to purchase more and better quality things to be able to allow your existence of survival uh, and your survival to, to to be easier all right so our currency of life is is money to buy things to make our life easier i wonder if the same i wonder if the same kind of thing would be placed on a different planet would humans want to install that if they had the op opportunity to have a default start a fresh start as elon musk thought about that i think if if we did have it another planet i think it would be good to forget that old way and try a new way you know you could literally perfect that world based on all of the wrongdoings of this world would you want to have governments would you want to have currencies in place or would you want to have communities working for each other and surviving all living you know in in harmony you know if you take away currency you take away um tyranny and stuff like that you you've got people working together for the greater good and that would be to survive you know working to survive as a community as opposed to um, having people higher up in that community um, with people working for them does that make sense Do you understand where i'm trying to go with this i think it would be a good opportunity to have a fresh start and uh, have something different in place and forget about our world systems of money and power and that kind of thing because i think yeah it works to a degree in this world because we have to it everything's supported on that and no one would want to change on great mass anyway even if we want even if we tried i don't think it would work but for a new world i think if you got like-minded people to go there and be like listen there's not going to be any money not going to be any currencies you're not going to have banks with with pound signs or dollar signs in there but you're going to get up and there's going to be things that we need to do and we're all going to do it and live in harmony you know i think that would be pretty cool Kepler not only focused its efforts in finding potentially habitable planets, in fact the bulk of its discoveries were strange worlds not suitable for life but fascinating nonetheless. Like the gas giants, planets composed mostly of gases such as hydrogen and helium with a relatively small rocky core, also known as hot Jupiters. These planets orbit extremely close to their parent stars and are abundant in Kepler's data. One such fascinating example of a gas giant is Koi 5ab. Astronomers first flagged Koi 5ab as a potential planet way back in 2009. At the time, this elusive alien world was only the second planet ever found by Kepler. It slipped through the cracks a decade ago, firstly due to the enormous amount of data that Kepler generated, and secondly because astronomers noticed that the main Koi 5a star had another companion star, making analysis very difficult for them. Indeed, the Koi 5 system was even more complicated than researchers realized at the time. By 2014, scientists had determined that the Koi 5 system actually harbors three stars, and it still wasn't clear if the planet Koi 5ab actually existed, or if the 2009 signal was generated by one of the companion stars. 
but thanks to additional data from the test satellite, scientists were able to confirm the existence of Koi 5AB. Planetary bodies on stable orbits in a multi-star system is quite a rare find, and the discovery of Koi 5AB is expected to add a lot to our understanding of planetary formation. Other exoplanet types identified by Kepler include super-Earths. They're more massive than Earth, yet lighter than ice giants like oh. Neptune and Uranus, and can be made of gas, rock, or a combination of both. Lava planets, a super-dense, larger-than-Earth worlds in close, hot orbits around their parent stars. Some of them, known as Chthonian planets, are likely the remnant cause of evaporated hot Jupiters. And finally, Trojan planets, planets of various size found in strange locations, and sometimes even as companions to larger planets, Amazing though none have been certainly identified yet. Kepler was finally retired on the 30th of October 2018, as it ran out of fuel. The telescope was deactivated with a good night command sent from Mission Control the next month. Coincidentally, Kepler's retirement fell on the 338th anniversary of Johann Kepler's death, after wow. whom it's named. Although not operational anymore, these incredible discoveries predict a near future in which astronomers will use new and advanced telescopes on the ground and in space to more deeply understand Kepler's numerous finds. One such telescope is already slated to go up into space in 2021. The James Webb Telescope will take a much closer look at some of these Kepler objects of interest and hopefully will bring us closer to answering the question, are we alone in the universe? Nah, we can't be. We can't be, man. Impossible. Um, it's just too big to even imagine, guys. But I really like that kind of um video to react to it's a little bit different than military stuff but you know i don't want to be just a military channel i want to be a bit of everything guys and if it floats your boat then please like share subscribe drop a comment below if you enjoyed that and i'll ask you this question do you think life exists elsewhere if you do if you don't let me know in the comments but if you want to support the channel a little bit more help me out a little which really does help then consider becoming a member link is below guys and if we, if you are already a member thank you guys so much i really do appreciate it but until next time, peace.